after a couple months late, I finally have my Zima board in. If you're coming from the Zima board community and don't know what threefold is, it is basically a decentralized data center where you earn TFT for providing capacity to the cloud. If you're coming from threefold and don't know what Zima board is, it is basically a super Raspberry Pi with passive cooling, a PCIe slot, and a more powerful CPU. It also has two Ethernet slots, which can be handy for certain things. Um, now, this is by far the smallest and one of the cheapest builds done for a threefold three node. It is questionable how useful this capacity could actually be to the network, um, but I suspect it could be used for certain very low resource needy applications that you need hosted elsewhere. That the debate on whether this is right for the, uh, the network is something that can be um, thought about, but at the very least, this project can earn some TFT and I'll go over this economics in a minute. Um, hopping right into the build, you need the eight gigabyte model to do this. You will also need a 500 gigabyte SSD costing about $60. I recommend doing a M2 NV me I think I said that right, um, form factor. Yeah, here's this one right here. It's a great one. And using this Sabrent or similar adapter to plug right into the side of your Zima board, like so. Pretty clean build, nice and cool to do it that way. Just don't accidentally knock the drive out. You can also directly connect the two and a half inch drive model, but I haven't personally done this. I've done that uh, build on here. On the economic side, this says um, on our farming calculator, this has eight gigs of RAM, four threads, because it's not a hyper-threaded um, CPU. Half a terabyte of SSD gives us about 78 TFT a month. That is not a lot dollar-wise per month. Um, but let's live in fantasy land here and say TFT is still at 10 cents a piece. That's, you know, $7 and 75 cents a month. So this build ends up costing about $380 divided by 7.75. It's a, it's a three year ROI, which is a long time, but keep in mind you were locked in at this rate for five years. There is no difficulty increase. And if TFT continues it back on this upward traje trajectory to who knows where, um, it could be uh, it could be a lot of profit. Um, this is somewhat of an ambitious simulation here, but say the token price after five years is one dollar, the gross profit from this little small device would almost be five thousand dollars, which is you know incredible. But that is a simulation, and we do not know the future. So some quick back end stuff on how to uh, set this up. You will need to create a farm if you do not already have one. You can create one through the app here. Um, simply download this, create a wallet, and then create a farm and note that farm ID. You can do this on Google Play or the Apple Store. You can also do this through um, the desktop, but I'm not going to cover that method here. You can look through my older videos to see that. Once you have that farm ID, and you only need one farm ID for your entire farm, not each device, you can head over, head over to the bootstrap generator, type in your farm ID, production, and download this first uh, image here. You need to flash that to a USB, um, any USB will do. Uh, flash it using Berlin Etcher or Rufus. Um, you could also probably figure out a way to put this directly onto the onboard storage. I did not do that, and I personally wanted to keep the existing operating system intact since I'm mostly doing this as a demo. Note that when you do this, you will only be using your Zima board for threefold. You cannot do more than one thing with it. This is a bare metal install. That covers all the back end stuff. We're gonna go over to a camera on the monitor connected to the Zima board because I don't have a way to directly capture that. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is wipe the um, 
SSD I have attached to it using a plethora of methods. I'm going to do it using a GRML Live Linux USB connected to the Zima board. You can do it externally elsewhere. Or if it's a new drive, you should not have to wipe it. Now notice I'm saying wipe, not format. This will not work if you format it. You are wiping it. You are getting rid of any sort of file structure or formatting on there. Otherwise, you will not successfully register onto the network. You will need a dis mini display port uh, video cord for this and a keyboard. As soon as you plug in the Zima, Zima board, start pressing F11. We're going to scroll down to our GRML flash disk. Enter and wait for that to boot up. Once it's loaded up, hit Q. Enter F disk dot L dash L. We see our NVMe there and four I N device NVMe zero and one semicolon do wipe FS flag A money sign I semicolon done and we are wiped. Now we are gonna shut down and reboot. When we reboot, we will also hit F11 again. All right, I put the um, zero OS USB in and hit F11. We're gonna go to setup. We're gonna go to CPU configuration and we're going to enable virtualization and enable BTD. And over at boot, we're going to change our priority to this one here. Now we're going to save changes and exit. If you got here, it is set up correctly. Um, once it starts to download, you'll see that hopefully you have a good Ethernet connection, and we do, it's starting to download. Over the next 10 minutes, it's going to show the in installation. Um, you might see some errors that could look alarming, but those are normal. And when you get to the final screen, in a second here, I'll skip to, I'll show you how to tell if it all went as planned. Okay, about 15 minutes later. Um, it's all loaded up. The node ID, the farm name, the cache disk is okay. If there's an error here, um, you don't have an SSD attached or you did not wipe it properly. Um, it's perfectly normal for, or not normal, the public IP configuration will be blank and you will have very low CPU usage and a whole bunch of zeros and low numbers. This is not your resources on your Zima board. They are the resources that are reserved for system or reserved for other people's cloud capacity. So the only reason these will go up if somebody is utilizing your Zima board for an application. If you got that final screen on the monitor on the Zima board, everything connected uh, correctly. If you want to go into the Explorer and double check that all of your resources are showing correctly, you can sort by uptime and find your node ID that popped up on the Zima board. You can see our half terabyte SSD showed up. It tends to overestimate RAM for some reason, but that is correct. And this is our thread count of four. So we see all is good here and everything connected successfully. That's all for this build. Um, We'll let try it out. Oh, one little side note. I noticed um, some difficulty in getting the Zima board to retain the preference on the USB boot. I'm not sure if that's just when Duke went on plugging the Zima board for a while. Yeah, maybe the BIOS tends to reset. Something to keep an eye out for. Make sure that you are rebooting to the USB and not, toward, not back to the EMMC. Uh, if anyone's having trouble with that, comment below and maybe we can figure out a solution on that.